In the heart of a quiet town lay Elmwood Avenue, a street shrouded in unsettling silence every night. Residents spoke in hushed tones about the peculiar happenings that seemed to gravitate toward the dilapidated house at the end of the lane. Number 13, Elmwood. The story begins with Sarah, a curious journalist drawn to the mysteries that the town whispered about. Her fascination with the supernatural led her to Elmwood Avenue on a cold, foggy night. Determined to uncover the truths hidden behind the boarded up windows of number 13. As she approached the eerie house, the dim light from her flashlight barely pierced the thick fog. The house stood there, looming like a sentinel of forgotten horrors. Stories had circulated about the house being the site of numerous unexplained disappearances, with locals claiming to hear whispers and cries Ignoring the chill that ran down her spine, Sarah pushed open the creaking gate and stepped onto the property. Inside, the house was a labyrinth of shadowed hallways and dust-choked rooms. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as she recorded her observations, her voice barely a whisper in the oppressive silence. It was in the heart of the house an old study filled with ancient books and papers, where Sarah found the diary of Jonathan Elmwood, the original owner. The entries were erratic, filled with tales of dark rituals and otherworldly entities summoned from the depths of the unknown. The last entry was a frantic scrawl, a warning of something he had unleashed that he could not control. The air grew colder, and the faint sound of whispers echoed through the empty rooms. Sarah's skepticism waned as fear took hold, the feeling of being watched growing stronger with every step. She ventured deeper, drawn by a morbid curiosity and the hope of a story that would define her career. It was then that the house seemed to come alive. Doors slammed shut, trapping her inside, and the whispers grew into anguished cries. Sarah's flashlight flickered, casting long shadows that danced like specters in the darkness. In a panic, she dropped the diary, its pages fluttering open to a sketch that made her blood run cold, a depiction of a shadowy figure, its eyes hollow and filled with malice, standing over the Elmwood property. Sarah realized too late the gravity of her situation. The house, or whatever dwelled within, did not appreciate intruders. As she raced through the darkened corridors, the line between reality and nightmare blurred. The story she sought was no longer one of intrigue, but of survival. The tale ends with Sarah's desperate escape into the night, the house groaning in displeasure behind her, her camera and recorder left behind in the chaos, captured the last moments of terror, an auditory testament to the horrors of Elmwood Avenue. The story remains unfinished. The true nature of the house at number 13 Elmwood, a mystery begging to be explored. Sarah's experience serves as a chilling reminder of the thin veil between our world and the unknown. And so, the story hangs in the balance, a dark invitation to those brave or foolish enough to delve deeper into the true, creepy, late-night horror stories of Elmwood Avenue. In the days following her harrowing escape, Sarah's mind was a tumult of haunting images and unsolved mysteries. She couldn't shake the feeling that what transpired at Elmwood House was only the beginning of something far more sinister, despite the terror she had experienced. Her journalistic instinct urged her to delve deeper, to 
uncover the truths that lay buried within the walls of number 13 Elmwood Avenue. Compelled by an unexplainable force, Sarah began to sift through historical records, old newspapers, and any materials she could find on the Elmwood family and their dark legacy. She discovered that the town's history was littered with unexplained occurrences, all seemingly connected to the Elmwood property. There were tales of people drawn to the house under mysterious circumstances, never to be seen again. Each story was a thread in a larger, more disturbing tapestry that Sarah felt compelled to unravel. As she pieced together the fragmented histories, Sarah realized that the entity Jonathan Elmwood had mentioned in his diary was not bound solely to the house, but was tethered to the Elmwood lineage itself. It appeared as though each generation had attempted to either appease or harness this entity, leading to a cyclical pattern of rituals and disappearances. Driven by an obsession she couldn't explain, Sarah decided to confront the current Elmwood heir, a reclusive figure who lived on the outskirts of town. Perhaps he held the answers to the questions that tormented her. As night enveloped the town once more, she set out towards the Elmwood estate, the air thick with the same oppressive dread she had felt at the house. Upon her arrival, she found the estate abandoned, save for a flickering light in the attic window. The door was ajar, as if inviting her in. Inside, the remnants of the Elmwood family's life lay scattered, covered in dust and decay. Sarah's footsteps echoed through the empty halls as she made her way towards the attic, drawn by an inexplicable curiosity. In the attic, amidst the relics of the Elmwood family's dark past, Sarah found a collection of artifacts and tomes that spoke of other dimensions and ancient packs made with entities beyond comprehension. The flickering light came from a single candle set beside an open book, its pages filled with incantations and diagrams that made Sarah's skin crawl. It was as though someone had been there just moments before her arrival pouring over the forbidden knowledge contained within those pages. As she delved deeper into the attic's secrets, Sarah uncovered a series of letters between the Elmwood heirs, each one more desperate and unhinged than the last. They spoke of a guardian that the family had been bound to serve, a creature that demanded sacrifices in exchange for unimaginable power and knowledge. The most recent letters hinted at a final ritual, one that would either break the family's curse or unleash an unspeakable horror upon the world. The sound of footsteps below jolted Sarah from her reading. She was not alone, heart pounding. She concealed herself behind a stack of ancient trunks peering out into the dimly lit attic. The footsteps grew louder, ascending the staircase with deliberate slowness. As the attic door creaked open, Sarah held her breath, bracing for the encounter that would unveil the next chapter in the Elmwood mystery. And there, in the doorway, stood a figure obscured by shadow, the candlelight flickering in their unseen eyes. The story hangs in this moment, the confrontation between Sarah and the keeper of the Elmwood secrets, a pivotal encounter that could unravel the fabric of reality or plunge it deeper into darkness. The tale of Elmwood Avenue remains unfinished, its secrets veiled in shadow, waiting to be explored further.
figure stepped forward into the dim light of the attic, revealing themselves to be not the feared Elmwood heir, but an elderly man, his face etched with lines of worry and fear. He was the caretaker of the estate, a guardian of secrets too burdensome for any one person to bear. His eyes filled with a mix of relief and surprise at seeing Sarah, hinted at a desperation to share the weight of his knowledge. I've been expecting someone, he whispered, his voice barely audible over the creaking of the old house. But I feared it would be too late. Sarah, emerging from her hiding place, confronted the caretaker with a barrage of questions. Who was he? What did he know about the Elmwood legacy and the dark rituals associated with the family? The caretaker, with a sigh that seemed to carry the weight of centuries, motioned for her to sit. He was ready tell his story, one that had been passed down through generations of caretakers, each one sworn to protect the secrets of the Elmwood family and the entity they served. The caretaker recounted tales of the Elmwood family's pact with an ancient being, a guardian of the threshold between worlds. This being, neither malevolent nor benevolent by human standards, operated under a set of cosmic laws incomprehensible to the human mind. The Elmwood family's prosperity was tied to their service to this entity, but so was their curse. As the night wore on, the caretaker revealed the true purpose of the rituals and sacrifices. They were meant to keep the entity appeased, to prevent it from crossing into our world. Each generation, the entity grew stronger, its demands more insatiable. The final ritual mentioned in the letters Sarah found was designed to sever the bond between the Elmwood family and the entity, but at a potentially catastrophic cost. The caretaker's tale was interrupted by a sudden chill that swept through the attic, extinguishing the candle and plunging them into darkness. The oppressive feeling of being watched returned with a vengeance, and the air thrummed with an unseen energy. In the shadows, something stirred, a presence ancient and indescribable, its attention fixed on Sarah and the caretaker. The caretaker grasped Sarah's arm, urgency in his grip, the ritual, he whispered, it's begun. We must stop it or the threshold will be crossed. Together, they descended the creaking stairs of the Elmwood estate, each step taking them deeper into the heart of the mystery and closer to the unseen force that lurked at the edge of reality. The story hangs in this moment of suspense with Sarah and the caretaker poised to confront the unknown, their actions poised to either avert a disaster or unleash an ancient horror upon the world. The fate of Elmwood Avenue and the secrets it harbors remain shrouded in the darkness, waiting for the next chapter to be written. With the candle extinguished and darkness enveloping them, Sarah and the caretaker hurried through the maze-like corridors of the Elmwood estate, guided only by the caretaker's intimate knowledge of the house. The air was thick with an electric tension, as if the very fabric of reality was straining under a great, unseen pressure. The whispers that Sarah had heard during her first visit to the house returned, now louder. A cacophony of voices speaking in a language that twisted the mind. As they moved, the caretaker explained that the ritual, if completed, would not only free the Elmwood family from their ancient pact, but also risk tearing open a gateway between worlds. 
allowing the entity and its unfathomable kin to pour into their reality. The only way to stop the ritual was to find the ceremonial chamber where it was being performed and disrupt the intricate patterns of power that had been laid out. The estate, long thought to be merely a residence, revealed its true purpose as they descended into the bowels of the house. Hidden beneath the surface were ancient chambers and hallways, carved with symbols that seemed to writhe in the flickering light of the caretaker's hastily lit torch. Finally, they arrived at a vast subterranean chamber, the heart of the Elmwood Curse. At its center, stood an elaborate arrangement of stones and ritual objects, pulsating with an eerie light. Around the perimeter, the shadows seemed to move of their own accord, as if agitated by the presence of the intruders. In the center of the chamber, a figure cloaked in robes chanted before an altar, oblivious to Sarah and the caretaker's entrance. The air around the figure shimmered with energy, the words of the chant echoing off the ancient stones, each syllable a hammer blow against the walls of reality. The caretaker knew what had to be done. He motioned for Sarah to stay back and began to mutter a counter incantation, a desperate attempt to disrupt the ritual. The robed figure sensed the interference and turned, revealing a face that was not human, its eyes deep pools of endless darkness. Sarah, despite her fear, began to document the scene before her, her journalist's instinct overcoming her terror. She understood that what was unfolding could be of monumental significance, not just for the town but for the understanding of reality itself. As the caretaker's counter incantation grew louder, the chamber started to quake, the ancient stones groaning under the strain of opposing forces. The entity, its attention now fully on the intruders, advanced towards them, each step resonating through the chamber like a beat of a dark heart. The story pauses here, on the brink of a confrontation between the ancient guardian of the threshold and those who would defy its will. Sarah and the caretaker stand against the darkness, their actions in the next moments poised to determine the fate of the Elmwood legacy and perhaps the very fabric of their world. The outcome of this confrontation remains unseen the story hanging in the balance, waiting for the next chapter to be written in the shadows of Elmwood Avenue.
In the suffocating darkness of the Elmwood estate, Sarah and the caretaker hastened toward the source of the chilling energy that had overtaken the house. Their only guide through the pitch black corridors was the inexplicable cold that grew more intense with each step, drawing them inexorably towards the heart of the ritual. The cold led them to the basement, a place that the caretaker confessed had always been avoided, even in daylight. It was here, in the bowels of the estate, that the final ritual was set to take place, a ritual that the caretaker believed was now being hastened by forces beyond their control. As they descended the creaking basement stairs, the air grew thick with a palpable sense of dread. The darkness seemed alive, whispering secrets in a language that twisted the mind. Sarah's heart raced, every journalist's instinct telling her to flee. Yet the story of a lifetime propelled her forward. At the bottom of the stairs, they found the ritual chamber cavernous room lined with ancient symbols that seemed to shift and writhe in the dim light of flickering torches. In the center of the room stood a stone altar, upon which lay an array of ceremonial items that were unsettling in their purpose, but it was the circle of figures around the altar that drew their immediate attention. Hooded and robed, they were motionless and silent, as if in deep concentration, the caretaker gasped, recognizing among them the lost heirs of the Elmwood family, their faces obscured by the shadows of their hoods. The energy in the room coalesced around a singular point above the altar, where the air shimmered and twisted. A tear in the very fabric of reality slowly opening. The whispered language of the darkness grew louder. A cacophony of voices that seemed to call from the other side of the threshold. Sarah, driven by a mix of fear and an unyielding desire for the truth, stepped forward. Her camera raised to capture this unprecedented event. But as she did, the figures turned towards her. Their movement naturally synchronized. A cold wind swept through the chamber, extinguishing the torches and plunging the room into an even deeper darkness. In the absolute black, Sarah felt the caretaker's grip tighten on her arm. They were no longer alone. The presence that had followed them from the attic was here, in the chamber its unseen gaze fixed upon them. The boundary between worlds was thinning, the ritual nearing its completion, and the consequences of their intrusion unknown. The story hangs in this moment of suspense and terror, on the brink of cosmic revelation or catastrophe, with Sarah and the caretaker caught between the realms of the known and the unfathomable. The true nature of the Elmwood curse and the entity it serves remain cloaked in shadow. Their fates intertwined with the unfolding ritual below the estate. The tale of Elmwood Avenue remains unresolved, its darkest secrets and ultimate outcome yet to be discovered. As Sarah and the caretaker hurried through the darkened corridors of the Elmwood estate, the air around them seemed to thicken, charged with an energy that made the hairs on the back of their necks stand on end. The whispers of the past echoed off the walls, mingling with the sound of their hurried footsteps. Time felt distorted, as if the very fabric of the estate was warping around them. The caretaker led Sarah to a hidden chamber beneath the estate accessed through a secret passage behind a bookshelf. The chamber was ancient, predating the current structure, its walls carved with symbols that seemed to shift and dance 
in the flickering torchlight. In the center of the chamber stood an altar, atop which lay an assortment of objects, a weathered tome, a set of ancient knives, and a collection of stones arranged in a peculiar pattern. The ritual, the caretaker explained breathlessly, must be completed before the stroke of midnight. It's the only way to close the threshold and prevent the entity from entering our world. Sarah, despite her fear, felt a surge of resolve. She had come too far to back down now. The stories she had pursued, the secrets she had uncovered, all led to this moment. She understood the risks, but the journalist within her knew this was a story of monumental importance, one that could change the understanding of reality itself. As they prepared to begin the ritual, the ground beneath them trembled. A low rumble that seemed to emanate from the very depths of the earth. The symbols on the walls glowed with a sinister light air filled with a sound that was not quite a voice and not quite the wind. A sound that seemed to speak directly to the soul. The caretaker began to chant from the tone, his voice steady despite the growing chaos around them. Sarah, following his lead, took up one of the ancient knives and began to trace the symbols on the floor. Her movements guided by some unseen force. Just as the ritual was nearing its completion, the chamber door burst open, revealing a figure shrouded in darkness. Its presence was overwhelming, a force of nature that seemed to pull at the very essence of those in the room. The entity, or perhaps its emissary, had come to claim what it believed was rightfully its. The story hangs in this moment of confrontation, with Sarah, the caretaker, and the dark figure locked in a silent standoff. The outcome of the ritual, the fate of the Elmwood estate, and the balance between our world and the unknown all teeter on the edge of a knife. The darkness encroaches, the whispers grow louder, and the tale of Elmwood Avenue continues to unfold. Its next chapter yet to be written. Its mysteries still cloaked in shadow. In the dimly lit chamber, under the oppressive gaze of the dark figure, Sarah and the caretaker stood their ground. The intensity of the moment thick in the air. The caretaker continued his incantations voice growing more forceful, the ancient words resonating through the chamber like a tangible force. Sarah, feeling a surge of energy coursing through her, moved with purpose around the altar, completing the intricate pattern with the ancient knife. The symbols on the floor ignited with a pale light, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. The dark figure its form barely discernible in the shadows, remained motionless, its intentions inscrutable. The air around it seemed to warp and swirl, as if reality itself was bending in its presence. Sarah could feel its gaze piercing through her, a cold, calculating intelligence assessing the scene before it. As the clock tower in the town struck the first chime of midnight, a sudden silence fell over the chamber. The rumbling ceased, the glowing symbols steadied, and even the whispering voices hushed in anticipation. The caretaker's voice crescendoed into a final commanding shout, completing the ritual. For a moment, nothing happened. Then, a shockwave of energy erupted from the altar, sending Sarah and the caretaker staggering back. The dark figure recoiled, its form flickering as if caught in a tempest. The chamber shook, stones falling from the ceiling, and the light from the symbols flared brilliantly before 
before extinguishing altogether. In the sudden darkness, Sarah could hear her own breath, rapid and shallow, and the caretaker's soft groans as he struggled to his feet. The presence of the dark figure felt diminished, but not defeated, its essence lingering like a shadow just beyond the reach of sight. The caretaker found a lantern and lit it, casting a warm, flickering light in the chamber. The altar appeared unchanged, but the air felt different, as if a charge had been lifted. Yet, the sense of victory was tenuous. The ritual had affected the entity, but to what extent was unclear. The dark figure was nowhere to be seen, but the feeling of unease persisted, a reminder that some thresholds, once approached, cannot be entirely closed. The entity's connection to the Elmwood lineage and its interest in our world remained, a dormant threat lurking in the shadows. As Sarah and the caretaker emerged from the chamber, the estate above seemed eerily quiet, the night holding its breath. The mystery of the Elmwood family and the entity they served was far from resolved. But a new chapter had begun in the struggle to understand. And perhaps, one day, control the forces that lay beyond the veil of reality. The story of Elmwood Avenue, with its dark rituals, ancient entities, and the brave souls who confront them, remains open tale of horror and intrigue that continues to unfold, its end yet unwritten. Emerging from the depths of the chamber, Sarah and the caretaker were met with the eerie calm of the Elmwood estate. The tumultuous events beneath the ground felt like a distant storm, leaving behind a deceptive peace. The night was still, 
the earlier chaos seeming almost like a dream. Yet, the tension in the air was palpable, a silent testament to the reality of their ordeal. The caretaker, weary but resolute, led Sarah through the darkened halls, their footsteps echoing in the vast emptiness. The ritual has altered something, but the balance is delicate, he murmured, more to himself than to Sarah. We've pushed back the darkness, but for how long, I cannot say. As they approached the main entrance, the first light of dawn began to seep through the cracks in the boarded up windows, casting long shadows across the dusty floor. It was a new day, but the light brought little comfort, serving only to illuminate the lingering traces of the night's terrors. Sarah, her mind racing with questions and theories, felt an overwhelming sense of responsibility. The story she had stumbled upon was not just a tale of haunted houses and forgotten legacies. It was a saga of unseen worlds brushing against our own, a narrative that she felt compelled to explore and expose. With a heavy heart, she turned to the caretaker. This isn't the end, is it? There's more to the Elmwood story, more secrets hidden in the shadows. The caretaker, looking older and more tired in the light of the new day, nodded slowly. The Elmwood legacy is a Pandora's box of ancient mysteries and dark packs. What we've experienced tonight is but a single thread in a vast tapestry. If you choose to pull at it, be prepared for what may unravel. As Sarah stepped out into the cold light of dawn, the Elmwood estate behind her stood silent. A brooding monolith holding centuries of secrets within its walls. The town beyond remained unaware of the night's events. The thin veil between worlds still intact for now. The story of Sarah, the caretaker, and the Elmwood estate hangs in the balance. The events of the night, a harbinger of darker tales yet to be uncovered. The mysteries of the Elmwood legacy, intertwined with the fabric of reality itself, beckon to those brave or foolish enough to explore them, promising revelations that could enlighten or perhaps consume. As Sarah walked away from the estate, her determination set against the backdrop of an awakening world. The story of Elmwood Avenue remains open, its chapters waiting to be written, its horrors and wonders yet to be fully revealed. With the dawn casting a new light on the world, Sarah found herself at a crossroads, both literally and metaphorically. The Elmwood estate towering silhouette receding in the distance seemed to call out to her, a siren song of unsolved mysteries and untold stories. The caretaker's words echoed in her mind, a solemn reminder of the depth and danger of the path she was contemplating. Determined to delve deeper into the Elmwood legacy, Sarah made her way back to the town her mind ablaze with the events of the night and the secrets that lay just beyond reach. The town, awakening to the routines of the day, was oblivious to the shadows that danced at its edges. Shadows that Sarah now knew all too well. She decided to visit the local library, hoping to uncover more about the town's history and the Elmwood family's place within it. The library, a quaint building with creaking floors and shelves, heavy with dust-covered tomes, held the promise of forgotten knowledge. As she pored over old manuscripts, maps, and newspaper clippings, Sarah stumbled upon a series of articles that hinted at a pattern of strange occurrences 
linked to the Elmwood estate throughout history. Each article seemed to dance around the truth, never fully revealing the nature of the events, but clearly pointing to a long-standing connection between the Elmwood family and the unexplained. Among the yellowed pages, Sarah found a cryptic reference to an ancient society that had once sought to understand and harness the forces at play within the Elmwood estate. This society, shrouded in secrecy, had left behind a trail of esoteric symbols and obscure writings, clues that Sarah felt compelled to follow. As the day wore on, Sarah's research painted a picture of a town entwined with the supernatural. Its fate, inexplicably linked to the Elmwood family and the entity they served. The more she uncovered, the more she realized that the story was far from over. It was evolving, growing with each discovery, each piece of the puzzle leading her deeper into the labyrinth of the unknown. As the library clock struck the hour, marking the onset of evening, Sarah gathered her notes, a map of the town marked with points of interest and a determined spirit. The story of Elmwood Avenue and the mysteries it harbored was calling her a whisper in the wind, a shadow in the twilight, urging her to continue her investigation. Stepping out of the library, Sarah felt the weight of the coming night, a canvas upon which the next chapter of her journey would be written. The town, with its hidden secrets and silent watchers, seemed to brace itself for what was to come. The story of Elmwood Avenue, intertwined with the fabric of reality and the realms beyond, hung in the balance, waiting for Sarah to unravel the threads of the past and confront the darkness that lay ahead. As evening descended upon the town, casting long shadows that seemed to whisper secrets, Sarah's resolve deepened. The map in her hand, dotted with symbols and notes, became her guide through the winding streets, leading her to the very edges of the town where the fabric of reality appeared thinnest. Her first destination was an old, abandoned church marked on her map, a place rumored to have connections with the ancient society she'd read about in the library. The church, a gothic structure with towering spires and stained glass windows now darkened with age, stood isolated on a hill overlooking the town. Its once hallowed grounds were overgrown with wild vegetation, and the air around it felt charged with an unseen energy. Sarah, flashlight in hand, pushed open the heavy wooden doors, their creak echoing through the silent nave. Inside, the church was a shadow of its former self, pews scattered and an altar stripped of its sanctity. The air was thick with dust, disturbed only by Sarah's careful steps. Her flashlight revealed faded frescoes depicting scenes of celestial beings and otherworldly realms, a visual testament to the church's esoteric past. In the sacristy, Sarah discovered a hidden compartment within the altar, inside which lay a collection of ancient manuscripts their pages filled with the same cryptic symbols she had seen in the library. These manuscripts spoke of gateways and guardians, of a balance between light and darkness that the ancient society had sought to maintain. Among the texts, a map mirrored the one she had, but with additional markers and notes in a language she could not decipher. As Sarah delved deeper into the manuscripts, the air around her began to grow colder, and the faint sound of whispers filled the church, 
she felt an inexplicable pull towards the crypt below, as if the answer she sought lay buried with the dead. With trepidation, Sarah made her way to the crypt, each step taking her further into the heart of the mystery. The crypt was a maze of tombs and monuments to long-forgotten souls, and at its center stood an ancient sarcophagus, its lid adorned with the same esoteric symbols. The whispers grew louder, and a cold wind seemed to emanate from the sarcophagus, as if it were breathing. Sarah, compelled by a force beyond her understanding, reached out to touch the cold stone. At that moment, the church above seemed to groan under the weight of centuries, and the ground beneath her trembled. The line between the physical world and the one beyond blurred, and Sarah found herself on the threshold of a revelation that could shatter the boundaries of her reality. The story of Elmwood Avenue intertwining paths of light and darkness, ancient secrets, and the relentless pursuit of truth continues to unfold, its depth and complexity growing with each step Sarah takes into the unknown. The narrative remains open, a journey into the heart of the supernatural, with mysteries that beckon and terrify in equal measure. The moment Sarah's fingertips grazed the ancient stone of the sarcophagus, a surge of energy coursed through the crypt, extinguishing her flashlight and plunging her into darkness. The whispers crescendoed into an unintelligible chorus surrounding her, as if the very air was alive with voices from another time, another realm, blind in the black. Sarah's heart raced, her breaths coming in quick, shallow gasps. The cold stone under her fingers felt like the only anchor in a sea of swirling darkness. Then, as suddenly as it had extinguished, her flashlight flickered back to life, casting an eerie glow over the sarcophagus. The whispers faded retreating into the shadows, leaving a heavy silence in their wake. With the light came a partial relief, but the intensity of the moment lingered. A palpable tension in the air. The sarcophagus, now clearly visible in the beam of the flashlight, seemed to beckon, its engravings glowing faintly, as if imbued with an inner light. Compelled by a mix of fear and fascination, Sarah examined the sarcophagus more closely. The symbols, now illuminated, 
revealed a narrative of their own. A story of gateways guarded by beings, neither of this earth nor entirely otherworldly. It spoke of a covenant made long ago, a balance struck between the forces of light and darkness to maintain the fabric of reality. Among the symbols, one in particular caught Sarah's eye, a sigil that matched one she had seen on the map from the library. It was linked to a location on the outskirts of the town, a place marked as a nexus of powerful energies. Realizing the crypt offered no more answers, Sarah made her way back to the surface, the weight of her discoveries pressing down on her. The church, once a place of worship, now felt like a sentinel standing guard over secrets too vast for any one person to bear. Outside, the night was still, the moon casting long shadows across the ground. The town lay quiet, its inhabitants unaware of the thin veil that separated them from the mysteries Sarah was unraveling. She knew her next step was to follow the sigil's lead, to venture to the location marked on the map, where perhaps the pieces of this intricate puzzle would begin to fall into place. As Sarah set out towards this new destination, the Elmwood estate loomed in her mind, a reminder of the dark thread that connected all these mysteries. The story of Elmwood Avenue and its tangled web of secrets continued to unfold, each revelation leading Sarah deeper into a labyrinth of supernatural intrigue, the end of which remained shrouded in the shadows of the unknown. As Sarah made her way towards the location marked by the sigil, the air grew thick with an anticipatory silence, as if the very night itself was holding its breath. The moon, a mere sliver in the sky, provided scant illumination, casting eerie shadows that seemed to move and twist of their own accord. The marked location was a clearing in the dense forest that bordered the town, a place untouched by time, where ancient stones stood in a circle, their origins lost to history. The air here was charged, vibrating with an energy that Sarah could feel prickling her skin. As she stepped into the clearing, the stones seemed to hum, a low, resonant sound that filled the air with a palpable sense of power. The ground beneath her feet began to tremble, and the wind picked up, howling through the trees with voices that seemed all too human. In the center of the stone circle, a fissure of light appeared, growing wider and brighter, tearing through the fabric of reality to reveal a gateway from this gateway, shadows began to emerge, formless at first, then coalescing into figures of terrifying aspect, their eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. Sarah realized with a chilling certainty that she had unwittingly completed the final step of the ritual, started within the Elmwood estate. The gateway was opening beings that the Elmwood family had sought to appease, to keep at bay, were now stepping through into our world. As the figures advanced, the air filled with the scent of decay, and the sound of whispers turned to malevolent laughter. Sarah, caught between the approaching shadows and the ancient stones, felt a surge of despair. Her search for the truth had led her here this moment of reckoning, but in that despair, a spark of resolve ignited. Sarah remembered the manuscripts, the symbols, and the rituals. With a clarity born of desperation, she understood that her only chance was to use this knowledge against the 
the entities before her. Racing against the encroaching darkness, Sarah began to chant, drawing on the ancient words and symbols she had learned. The air crackled with energy as she traced a sigil in the air, her voice rising above the howling wind. The shadows hesitated, their advance slowing as the gateway began to flicker and pulse. The ground shook violently, and the stones around the clearing glowed with a fierce light. With a final defiant shout, Sarah completed the chant. A wave of force emanated from the sigil, sweeping through the clearing like a gale. The shadows screamed. A sound of rage and pain as they were pulled back towards the gateway, which contracted rapidly, collapsing in on itself with a sound like thunder. Silence fell, broken only by Sarah's ragged breaths. The gateway was closed, the shadows gone, but the cost was clear. The clearing, once a place of ancient power, now lay barren. The stones cracked and lifeless. Sarah, her energy spent, knew that she had averted a catastrophe. But the darkness she had fought against was not destroyed, it merely pushed back, biding its time. As the first light of dawn began to touch the horizon, Sarah made her way back to the town. Her mind heavy with the night's events, she had faced the horrors that lay beyond the threshold and survived. But the tale of Elmwood Avenue, with its dark secrets and ancient mysteries, was far from over. The story had reached a conclusion, but the horror remained. A shadowy presence lurking at the edge of reality, waiting for the next chapter.